Hello and welcome back. In this video, you and I get to chat about actors, specifically threat actors. And we can think of a threat actor as the individual or the entity who's driving the attack. And normally that attack is going to be aimed at compromising something in our system. Maybe it's compromising a user. Maybe it's compromising a vulnerability. But it's the threat actor that's initiating and causing that to happen. And what's surprising really about threat actors is that not all attacks, in fact, most attacks don't just come from the outside. There's so many attacks that are done by people who are already part of the organization or company, and those are considered to be an internal or an insider threat. So if somebody's attacking an organization or a company and they're, they don't have any credentials or anything to do with that company as far as you know belonging to it, that would be an external threat. And those are certainly real, but there's a lot of attacks that happen internally as an insider threat. So that is an important aspect to remember as we work on defending and protecting our networks is that we get to protect it from people external as well as people who are internal to the company as well. And a couple of examples would be maybe a person who's disgruntled or maybe a person who's learning hacking and they want to try a few attack tools on our local network. Well, we need to be aware that that happens and we want to protect against it. And one question we would want to ask ourselves or be at least aware of is how well prepared is the attacker who's trying to compromise our system? What resources do they have? How much funding do they have? What's their level of sophistication or capability? Are they expert black hat hackers or is it somebody just trying to run a script or a tool they just found on the internet? So the threat actor could be anywhere on that scale from new to very, very advanced. Another thing to consider when looking at individual threat actors who might cause harm or try to cause harm to our systems and networks and people is what is their intent? I mean, what is their motivation? What drives them? Because if you have somebody that is very like, for example, let's say you have a nation state <laughs> that is trying to compromise another country or another nation state, they are probably very, very motivated to do that. And so that would be an example of an advanced persistent threat or APT where they want to get in. They want to compromise the system and stay in, hopefully undetected. And then with that access, have their way or get information or whatever their intent was regarding that compromise. And so when we have an organization with lots of resources or a country with lots of resources, we do have to be aware that advanced persistent threats are absolutely real. It's also very common as we talk about threat actors to call them hackers or attackers. They all fall in that same category, individuals who might cause harm or confidentiality breaches in our organization. Now, some, some type of threat agents are not really malicious. For example, there's a concept called shadow IT. It sounds really cool, but it's not. <laughs> shadow IT is when you have an individual at an organization and maybe they wanted Wi-Fi for a part of the building or maybe they wanted some cloud service and they asked IT for it. They made the request and it didn't come or they failed just to, to ask IT for it and they got that service on their own. So they've implemented their own little home Wi-Fi router or they've implemented some cloud service on their own without authorization from the organization. And that's referred to as shadow IT. And the reason it's serious is because that individual doesn't really have a big picture of all the considerations security wise regarding that new service or functionality that they're adding on their own. And so the risk is if by their actions, they open up a security vulnerability or a hole that's big enough to drive a truck through <laughs> an attacker. If they discover that could then compromise the rest of the network because of something an end user did just for some services that they wanted and they did it on their own with shadow IT. And also tying into the concept of internal versus external threat, internal users hopefully don't have full access to everything on their local computers even because we don't want them installing malware or anything else, even if they get tricked into it through social engineering. So what we'd want to consider is that when we have attacks that we're expecting and threat actors, it could be an authorized user, it could be an unauthorized user, or it could be a semi-authorized user. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we're protecting our networks and systems and users against anything or anybody who might be a potential threat actor that is trying to compromise our systems. Another hacker type that I want you to be aware of is referred to as a script kitty. Now, generally, a script kitty refers to somebody who's not that advanced, but they can download a tool from the internet, like your Cinea or any of the other millions of tools out there, and then try it out. So they're not really writing code, they're not experts on how the operating systems and networks operate, but they download some code, a script, if you will, they ran it, and we refer to those types of attackers as script kitties. Another type of hacker slash attacker is known as a hacktivist. A hacktivist is an activist who's willing to hack to get what they want, to help get their point across. And oftentimes a hacktivist doesn't care about getting caught. Maybe they know they're going to get caught, but they, they feel so strong about their cause that they're willing to hack to make that cause move forward an inch or a mile or whatever it is they're trying to promote. 
Another classification of hacker is a state actor. And usually if we have a state actor with lots of resources and everything else, they're going to be an advanced persistent threat, an APT, because they have the money, they have the motivation, and they have the time to go low and slow and get in and compromise a system. So a state actor as a classification of a hacker would be a very serious threat. Another category for hackers would be a competitor. Let's imagine we have like five companies all doing similar things, and one company is, wants to bring down the other one. They want to steal their secrets or give them a bad reputation or whatever it is. That certainly is another classification that we'd want to be aware of is that are our competitors trying to hack us to steal our secrets or bring us down. And one last category I'd love to chat with you about in this video regarding hacking types is what if we had a group of, of criminals that were all IT based and they were smart, like 50 or 100 years ago, we had mobs and organized crime and it was much different back then than it is today. Today, organized crime and criminal syndicates, they're using malware and they're using code and IT to help get what they want and advance their causes. So yet that would be another category that we'd want to be aware of, and that is criminal syndicates. So in this video, we've taken a look at threat actors, some of their motivations, some of the categories for hackers. And in the next video, I'd like to talk with you about attack vectors, the methods that we want to be aware of that attackers can use to compromise our systems. And we'll take a look at that in the next video. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.